Hello simulated car people and welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel, the home of virtual reality racing and too many tea bags. In this video we're taking a look at the Porsche 911 GT3R which was just added to Sector 3's race room racing experience along with the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup and the Porsche Cayman GT4. And we're going to be answering the question of whether or not it's a good Porsche or is it is it just underwhelming and, and quite quite frankly boring. Of course it's a bloody good Porsche, it's race room racing experience and when it comes to GT3 cars this is the simulator to be playing. Now you're going to be dying to know what's good about this vehicle, well let's start off with the handling, the most important part of a simulated race car. Simply put this captures the raw essence of what you expect from a Porsche and that is it rotates on a dime. Take your foot off the accelerator, you're rotating. Put your foot heavily on the accelerator, you're rotating. Turn the steering wheel, you're rotating. Put your head in a washing machine, you're rotating. Whatever you do, the car's going to be turning into the corners and uh, it's going to be doing it in a really satisfying and really controllable way. But the most crucial aspect is the lift off oversteer and the way that you don't, you don't have to fully come off the gas with a Porsche. You kind of lift off it a little bit, almost as if, almost as if you were driving a front wheel drive car in some ways, but you're balancing the rear of the car by coming off the throttle, coming on the throttle, just driving the car on the, on the accelerator. Put it that way, you drive this on the accelerator perhaps more than many other vehicles. I think where it really stands out though, as I say, that lift off oversteer, but especially the, the mid to late corner characteristics and the sense that you can carry more speed into the corner rather than having to get on the brake super early, get rid of all that speed and then get on the throttle and counter steer a bit as you would with a Ferrari, which is more on the throttle, more counter steer, more deal with that power. The Porsche is more modulate the power, lift off, keep a little bit of power on it get it through the corner be nice and delicate and smooth with it nurse it through the corner tiptoe the car like you're like you're in your garden in your socks you don't want to tread on any snails i've done that it's not pleasant but that's that's the approach of this car and it and it's awesome and the race room version of this really magnifies that essence of this car and it, it just makes it super compelling super addictive you you always know that you're in control of the car if you make a mistake it's your bad driving it's your fault it's not the simulator also what I found with the race room version of this car is just the ridiculous grip this vehicle has and rather nicely and satisfyingly if you go over the limit with all four tyres, say you brake a bit too heavily into a corner or you're braking with a bit too much steering, say T1 at uh, Nürburgring GP for example, and you start laterally sliding out, the grip comes back to you really quickly so much so that you can actually use that to get a bit of angle into the corner and then you catch that bite and then start modulating the throttle so uh, basically it allows you to butcher your corner entry but somewhat recover it with a bit of style and look like you did it on purpose and end up getting quite a good lap time out of it. Uh, really nice. I say in other simulators, sometimes with, with Porsches or sometimes with just en any cars in many other simulators, when you go over that lateral grip on all four tyres you can just start skidding outwards and you have to wait quite a while for that grip to come back to you. But with this it comes back very quickly, making it really quite forgiving. Which is always nice because I need all the help I can get whilst I'm driving with a teacup in the other hand. Another real notable characteristic with this race room Porsche is the way the front end suspension will sort of skip and bounce as you're going over bumps but also as you're sort of understeering and this is separate to the, uh, to the understeer effect which you can also feel is part of the force feedback in the game. Separate to that it's just the suspension travel of the front of the car and the front of the car fighting for grip when you come around certain corners especially those tighter lower speed corners uh, on bumpier tracks it, but it makes the steering just feel really active and again makes the car super engaging i'm really fortunate that i'm using a direct drive wheel so you know it just feels superb you really feel like there's a direct connection between the front tires the, and the road surface and the vehicle pounding away at that road surface you can obviously dial the, the force feedback back up or down and dampening whatever and do what you want with it but I like it feeling moderately active and if you go and watch on YouTube onboard videos of Porsches being pushed to the maximum, many cars in fact being pushed to the maximum, you notice this characteristic of the force feedback and the, the steering and how the tyres come through, the, the road surface on the tyres comes through the wheel with these quite large low frequency bumps really shuffling your hands about. And to be honest, I wouldn't really be surprised with a car like a Porsche that this would be particularly pronounced because the car is so neutrally balanced, which allows for its mental 
lift off oversteer and on power oversteer and, and it's and it's ballet dancer spinning uh you know it's as neutral as you can get as far as race cars go it, you know it might as well just be a fidget spinner with wheels attached to it and lastly another really pronounced handling characteristic of this car in race room is a sense that you really can feel the mass of the vehicle the suspension travel and the loading of the car through the corners now i don't know how much of that comes inherently from the vehicle itself i think a good component of that is the case because you notice it more or less with certain vehicles in race room or how much of it is to do with race rooms force feedback and i have to say since about i think it was a year and a half ago or so they changed the force feedback and race room racing experience force feedback is amazing when it comes to letting you know the the general load on the car and the suspension travel it just comes through super clearly as i say with, with a direct drive wheel especially but i i tested it with a t300 um prior prior to using my direct drive wheel uh, and it was very clear through that as well which is really nice but you notice with the with the porsche the mass of the car so when you're going up through corners like the schumacher s's or you, you're doing the NGK chicane. I'm just using Nurburgring GP because that's what we spent most of the time on as a, as a primary example here, and I happen to know the corner names. But as you're shuffling the car through those corners, you can really preemptively load it up, get the mass of the car set up, follow it through, and then catch it with the other aspects of the, the control of the vehicle that you've got. Again, it's just, you've got so much control and precision over this vehicle, and it feels like it's all down to you despite the the road noise and the the shopping of the steering um it's it's a, tr a real a real delight it's it's like the combination of a combine harvester driving over a field full of cows in that it's very agricultural and raw and uh, a nice really smooth luxury five-star hotel cheesecake perfect combination in my mind make sure you make sure you've got the windows shut because you don't want the manure and the uh, the eviscerated cow carcasses getting on your cheesecake but you know absolutely got glorious i'm i'm super hyped for this car uh, and um outside of the handling though that we'll move away from the, the handling side of things and we'll talk about the other bits that sector three have nailed the sound um you know it's, it's sector three they, they still have the leading simulator when it comes to sound. So the engine note is fantastic. The wind effects, the stone, if, stone and um, sort of road noise if you go off-road, the tyre scrub sound effects, which you can adjust depending on what your taste is as well. Um, you've got additional sound effects for the, for like the turbo, the, the spooling. Everything that you'd expect with the car is it, it's just, it's just a, an assault on the ears. As I say, Sector 3 do good do good with the sounds you, you owe it to yourself to turn the volume up have your ears bleed lose a few brain cells but enjoy it whilst doing so i would say though the stopwatch when you uh, the shift protection stopwatch sound that is annoying sure you, you know the argument there is that i shouldn't be butchering the uh, the gearbox and downshifting too hard but that sound effect just makes me want to shove a pencil up my nostril so Maybe we can turn that sound effect off or Sector 3 can put that as a, an option because it isn't. But other, other than the stopwatch, the downshift protection stopwatch, again, the sound effects, amazing. The external sound effects are really nice as well when you've got other cars going past you or say you're just about to join the track from the pit lane, the car zooms past you. It sounds great. It's really immersive. And, you know, when you put your VR headset on, Race Room obviously has VR support as well. It, it all comes together really as the immersion. Sound is a huge part of immersion, a huge part of perception of speed. And as I said in that previous GT3 video we did, GT3 cars, let's face it, they're not the fastest of vehicles, but when you've got a proper roaring engine noise and roaring engines of cars beside you and the uh, nice wind and ambient sounds and everything going on, that gives you a good perception of speed and makes up for the actual relative low speed of these cars compared to formula vehicles or other faster vehicles that are to be found in sim racing and in and in race room and other simulators now outside of the handling and the sound let's let's talk about the visuals of the of this car and again uh well it, you know it looks 
it looks really quite nice. Uh, 20 car skins, so you can have a nice full field if you just want to do a a, a Porsche race, uh, j just the same, you know, the same car, fixed car race. You can actually have a grid of cars that look different, so it doesn't doesn't look like a a loaf of cheap white bread. You, you know, you've got it's like one of those proper granary artisan loafs. There's proper variation there and something to feast your eyes on. But outside of the car skins, the car model is really spot on. I mean, I'm not one of those people that goes in with a with a with the Hubble Space Telescope over the details so you know there will be people in the sim racing scene that do that i'm sure they can probably find something wrong with it maybe they can't maybe sector three have even defeated those sim racing scrutineers <laughs> let me know in the in the comments if you can scrutineer an issue with the car model are oh, there the hubcap is 0.3 millimeters out of out of alignment the exhaust pipe is one billionth of a millimeter off to the right i demand a refund T to be fair those uh, sim racing scrutineer, 3D modeling scrutineer people, they're not actually being arses about it. They're just people that love details. It's that sort of train spotter component of sim racing. This is fine. It's something to get into. But let, let me know in the comments, as I say, if you have scrutineered an issue, that would be interesting to see with, with any of the Porsches. Maybe Sector 3 have defeated the scrutineers. We'll, we'll find out to the challenge. But for me personally, I'm, I'm not that interested in that degree of detail. I can appreciate it when it's been executed, but I'm, I'm not going to notice myself. I'm, I'm practically blind. All those, all these years of virtual reality, staring at those pixels, sellotape to my retina, I, I can't see a bus in front of me. So, uh, you know, I don't notice. It looks like a Porsche to me. The model looks superbly detailed. The car skins look fantastic. When I'm driving behind another vehicle, I can appreciate its rear end. I can see it moving over the bumps. I can really get into it. It sells the experience. It truly titillates me before I'm titwinkled. That's all that matters for the external car model. What I do really appreciate though is the fact that the game has VR support. When I'm sat inside the car and I look around the cockpit, all those details are there. The textures are super crisp. Again, it, it looks exactly as I'd expect the interior of this car to look like. Maybe there's a specific switch that's, that's slightly off or something. I don't know. I don't know. All I do know is when I'm pushing this car around a circuit and I glance at the dash and I see the shadow playing across the dash, moving over the curves of the subtle ladylike dashboard with its, with its bosom-like shapely smooth edges and bevels, when I'm looking at that whilst I'm pushing the car to the limit, or as I say, it just titillates me before I'm titwinkled, and that's that's all that matters. Again, it's just about the immersion, it sells the experience, fantastic texture work, fantastic attention to detail, fantastic cockpits. Graphically, uh, what, I don't know what number to give it. Why do I have to give it a number? For some reason, my mind there was like, oh, we've got to say what number it is out of 10. I'd give it a 9.5 because no one can have a, a 10 out of 10. I'm leaving room for when Sims are super photorealistic. I have no complaint. Oh, no, I do actually. I have one complaint about the, the, the model. On the window, on the driver's side window, it looks like someone's thrown gravel and there's little stone marks on it. Can, can someone clean that off, please? I, I don't know if they're meant to be like bolt details or something. It, it literally looks like someone's thrown gravel at the side window. That's, 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 three out of ten, terrible car model. But other than that, gorgeous graphics, fantastic externals, fantastic internals, looks great in VR. I wouldn't mind owning this car in reality, put it that way. So as you probably ga gathered from this video, it, you know, I think uh, Sector 3 have really hit this out of the park and really nailed it. And I think it goes along with the other GT3 content. The fact that you can race this with the other GT3 cars just adds to the previous video I made saying about how this is essentially the ultimate GT3 simulator. Um, it's really nice how we can just set up a server uh, up to, you can have up to 100 cars if, you, if your computer's fast enough and you're on the uh, Nordschleifer. But realistically, 32, 35 cars. You can have all the GT3 cars, you can have, what, what I like to do is a 15 minute qualifying, or 10 minute qualifying, 15 minute race, and then go to another track. And the server just goes through tracks, you get to race with everyone, you get to have a good time, people can just pick the car they, they like, just drive the car they want out of the GT3 selection, you don't have to own all of them, you can just have one of them, you just need to own the track, one of the cars that's running on the server, 
um, and the fact that you've got such a broad selection of cars there, all they need now really is a Ferrari license and uh, that's it, they, they've, got, they've got everything. So do I recommend this Porsche? Indeed, indeed Mr. Muscle Man does. Absolutely fantastic, I would even go so far as to say it's probably the best Porsche available in sim racing right now. Um, and I say that, I, I, in terms of basic handling, I really like the one in Nissetto Corsa as well, and Force Feedback Nissetto Corsa. I'm, I really am biased towards Force Feedback, and AC and uh, Race Room, to me, have really good Force Feedback, so that's, that's mostly why I pick them. I also think the handling of them is better as well, but that's just me. Um, but where this pips the Assetto Corsa one is just the sound, the sheer sound quality, um, internal and external, really pushes it to another notch, it really makes it more immersive and then the rolling servers and everything else that comes with it so i think uh, sector three congratulations you've created the best porsche in sim racing fireworks clapping cheers so um i would i would get this if i were you as i say we're going to be running servers uh we, we're putting it onto our schedule into the net into the next year we're going to be doing a schedule we're going to have race room there we'll obviously have this with our gt3 server can't wait to drive it more can't wait to drive into you more with this car really fun to to try and master this and get the absolute most out of it and do a little bit of tweaking here and there with it let's face it 90 percent of sim racing is actually playing with those knobs and dials and getting the most out of a car it's not really the driving it's about getting a computer to work having it break having nothing work then getting the car then not having the car work then fiddle with the setup then realize you're slow then fall into a state of depression and then occasionally do some driving. That's what sim racing is all about and this car really will deliver that I feel. There you go, what a magical, fantastical, superb vehicle by Sector 3. If you like this video, you know what you need to do. I know this is, it sounds a bit repetitive at the end of the video, but like a uh, like a shepherd herding his flock. It sounds like some kind of re weird religious thing now. I, you know, I have to mention it, otherwise people don't do it. Subscribe and like or dislike if you disliked it. In addition to that, if you want to support the channel and you're either in the United Kingdom or the United States, if you click on our Amazon links before you buy pot noodles or ideally buy like a, a house or a sports car, if you click our Amazon affiliate links, it's like donating to me, but it doesn't cost you anything. It just, and, and it really does help. So think about clicking on them. I really will appreciate that. Um, until the next one though, I'm I'm really excited to play this car some more. I'm I'm not quite as excited as having a nice cup of tea, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close up there. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good evening and goodbye. <laughs>